California, with its sprawling deserts and unpredictable weather, has been grappling with water issues for decades. Despite periods of intense rainfall, the state's antiquated water management system struggles to capture and store enough of this precious resource. The result, a persistent cycle of drought and flood, leaving many regions parched while others are submerged. But the state is undertaking a bold new project aimed at tackling these challenges head-on. This ambitious endeavor promises to transform a dry valley into a vast lake capable of storing billions of gallons of water. But why now? And how will it actually make a difference? Stick around as we explore the intricacies of this monumental project, its potential benefits, and the hurdles that lie ahead. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. California's relationship with water has always been challenging. Much of the state is classified as desert, making water scarcity a persistent issue. When early American settlers arrived in the region a few centuries ago, they found it difficult to cultivate the land due to the limited water supply. Fast forward to today, and the situation hasn't improved much. In October 2021, California's governor declared a statewide drought emergency, urging residents to cut their water consumption by 15% in hopes of mitigating the crisis. Yet, by 2023, this emergency was still in effect, with the state enduring official drought conditions for over a thousand days. However, the story doesn't end there. Amid this prolonged drought, California experienced such intense rainfall that several areas faced severe flooding, leading the governor to declare another state of emergency. The state found itself grappling with drought and floods simultaneously. But how is this possible? The answer lies in water management. During periods of heavy rain, vast amounts of water inundate the region, but only a small fraction is efficiently captured and stored. Once the rains cease, most of this water has either evaporated or flowed out to sea, leaving the drought to persist as if the rain never occurred. This paradox defines California's current water predicament. Now the pressing question is, can California do anything about it? The state has certainly made efforts in the past. Back in the 1950s, facing a similar challenge, California decided it was time for a significant change and launched the State Water Project, commonly referred to as the SWP. The project's objective was straightforward, to capture and store water during flood seasons so it could be utilized during droughts. In the initial years, over 20 dams were constructed, enabling the collection of water in large reservoirs during periods of heavy rainfall. One of the most well-known reservoirs is Lake Oroville, situated behind the Oroville Dam. Another notable example is Pyramid Lake, located just outside Los Angeles. During drought periods, the water stored in these massive reservoirs is distributed to farms and cities. This process relies on an extensive network of canals, aqueducts, and pumping stations, with some of the water traveling hundreds of kilometers, even crossing mountain ranges. The California Aqueduct, which transports water from the Sierra Nevada to Los Angeles while serving millions of people along the way, is the most iconic part of this system. Altogether, the SWP is one of the most sophisticated and ambitious water management systems globally. When the construction of the State Water Project began in the 1960s and 70s, it was intended as just the first phase. There were ambitious plans to expand the project with additional dams and canals throughout the 80s and 90s. However, these plans were ultimately postponed due to a variety of factors. The primary reason was financial. California was grappling with increasing debt at the time. Additionally, there were significant environmental concerns. The new water infrastructure disrupted the natural flow of rivers, which had a detrimental impact on local wildlife. For example, salmon and steelhead trout populations, which rely on swimming upstream to breed, saw a dramatic decline due to the barriers created by the dams and pumping stations. Given these challenges, California chose to halt further construction and rely on the existing components of the project, 
hoping they would be sufficient to meet the state's water needs. But in the last few years, the state water project's infrastructure has begun to show signs of strain. When these facilities were originally constructed, California's population was under 20 million. However, the state's population has more than doubled now, leading to a sharp increase in water demand. The existing dams and canals are struggling to meet this heightened need, contributing to the state's ongoing drought issues. California's water demands have increased far beyond what the system was designed to support. The droughts are getting worse, the population is getting bigger, and the water management system is in desperate need of an upgrade. That's why the state finally decided to build an entirely new mega reservoir. Just a few kilometers north of Sacramento lies a narrow valley surrounded by cliffs and hills. The landscape is arid and sparse, dotted with a few buildings with just a handful of residents. The settlement is labeled as sites on maps, though it's not officially recognized as a town. Now, the state plans to flood this valley, transforming it into what will be known as the Sites Reservoir. The concept for this project has been around since the 1950s and was nearly included in the first phase of California's Water Management Initiative. However, the State Water Project eventually deemed the proposal too ambitious, especially given the staggering $4 billion price tag. Recently though, opinions have shifted, and the state now believes the project is worth the investment. While the site's reservoir won't entirely solve California's drought issues, it could make a significant difference. Once constructed, site's reservoir would stretch 13 miles from north to south and 4 miles from east to west. When full, the reservoir would be around 260 feet deep from surface to floor at its lowest point. The reservoir can hold up to 1.5 million acre feet of water enough to serve 7.5 million people with water for an entire year. Once constructed, it would be the eighth largest reservoir in California. So how will this massive reservoir be constructed? The process will begin with the creation of several dams to seal off any gaps between the hills surrounding the valley. The two primary dams, Sites Dam and Golden Gate Dam, will be situated on the eastern side of the valley with additional dams to the north. Combined, these structures will effectively transform the valley into a giant waterproof basin. The next step is filling it with water. Typically, this would involve damming a river and allowing it to flood the valley. However, the site's valley lacks any significant rivers, with only a couple of small creeks present. As a result, an alternative approach will be necessary to fill the new reservoir. Approximately 25 kilometers east of the valley lies the Sacramento River, the largest river in California. During the rainy season, the plan is to divert water from the river, channel it through fields, hills, and towns, and then direct it into the site's valley. Pumping water from the river to the valley will require a significant amount of energy, but the State Water Project believes the effort is justified especially since some of the energy will be recaptured through hydroelectric power generation. Construction of the site's reservoir began in 2024, with completion expected by 2030. Now you might be thinking, are there any drawbacks? Some people think so. To fund the project, the state water project is expected to increase water rates, with concerns that prices might rise by up to 300%. What's the benefit of providing additional water if no one can afford it? Environmental advocates have also raised concerns about the impact of pumping water from the Sacramento River on migrating fish. When a dam obstructs an entire river, environmental damage is unavoidable, as fish are unable to swim upstream due to the concrete barrier. However, the site's project, being an off-stream reservoir, won't actually block the Sacramento River. The primary concern will be the high-capacity pumps, but these will be equipped with advanced fish screens to prevent aquatic life from being drawn in. The SWP is also committed to using some of the water from the site's reservoir to support local wildlife. Many fish species rely on deep, cold pools for breeding, and these pools can become warm and shallow during dry periods. 
The site's reservoir will help maintain these pools at the appropriate depth and temperature for successful breeding. While the main focus is on benefiting people, supporting other species is also a key objective. What do you think of this mega project? Do you think it's a good addition to California? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.